All right, hello again, everyone. Today, I I know I've not been keeping up with videos. I'm making broken promises every week. Um, today, I'm going to show you something really cool. That is how to texture in Photoshop, not on the 2D surface of the object, so not on the UV that you unwrap, but actually on the 3D surface of said object. Now, this means that you just export the object, and you can use just the automatic unwrapping that uh, Autodesk 3ds Max allows you to use, and you just paint on the object, and it makes sure that you do not have to use the, or you do not have to take the time to actually unwrap the object yourself, and it does a good enough job as well. It makes it easier for not uh, having seams or anything, just because of the way your UVs are laid out, or if you did a bad job unwrapping UVs. So, here I go. I will show you how to do it. First, we're just going to model a basic crate. And I just like using crates because, well, they're very simple to do. And it'll be easy to texture. It'll give you a base idea of how to use this. So we'll just create a box and make it 50 by 50 by 50. Um, generic units are fine for right now. We don't really need too much. I just isolated it. I do not know why. And I, OK, I am recording the right screen. Apologies. I was nervous I was not. So we're going to convert this to an edible poly. Hit our edge, select one edge, ring connect, and this is just a basic modeling of the crate. If you want to, you can skip forward and I'll get to the other part. This is just to model the crate. Now we'll just, oh, right, there's three ways I have to do this. There we go. And take all these, extrude inwards. So extrude, negative 1, or negative 2.5, there we go. And there is our crate. Very basic, nothing too hard to make, just simple for right now. So next what we're going to do is name this properly, because I like naming my things, even though I never do. Crate 01, and we are going to unwrap the UVs. So what we're going to do is hit 0 for render to texture, or render, render to texture. And we're going to make a new. Yeah. We're going to make a new. There we go. Place to save it. I apologize. Oh right. I got new hard drives, and I'm still having to remember where they went. There you are. Tutorials. Tutorials. And there go the tutorials. And this will be called. We'll just call it. Create our texturing. Go. So you save that under texturing or wherever you want to save it. What we want to do now is make sure our crate is selected. So under here, we make crate. Go down. Go use automatic unwrap. You can switch whatever channel you want. Usually, I just go with one because I'll overwrite any uh, unwrapping I did. I'm going to add an output. And right now, the ambient occlusion output that I want to use is not here. So what we need to do is go under rendering, render setup. I have hiccups. I apologize. And we go under the assign render. And we go to Mental Ray Renderer. So there we go. We make sure the production material under is Mental Ray. Close that out. Now, when we go Add, there will be an ambient occlusion one here. And we'll want it. Eh, let's do a 1024 texture and with 256. Actually, no, let's do 248 because of what I'm going to show you later. So we're going to do that. And we're going to save this into the same area that we want it. So this will just be ambient occlusion. OK. And we will render that out. So we're just going to let it render out. And it doesn't matter if it targets a specified map slot. We just want the image that it's going to save out. As you can see, it, the object is automatically unwrapped for us. And we don't have to worry about anything in that term. So we will let this render out very quickly. I'll pause the video. So now the texture is rendered out. And if you want to see how that looks, we'll just go under our, there we go. Under our, there we go, YouTube, and tutorials, and look at all these tutorials that I should be doing more of, texturing, and there you go. If we preview it, which is going to preview in Photoshop because Photoshop is stupid, it will show up that we did, uh, we'll leave Photoshop open anyways. But when we preview it, we'll see that the ambient inclusion is already rendered out, and I'll write it in wrap for us, so we don't have to worry about anything. Close that out. Close it out. Next, what we want to do 
is we want to get our UV rendered our template. Usually you don't need this, but I like having it. So we're just going to render UV. So under when you select your object, you'll have an automatic flatten UVs modifier that has put itself on there. Go open UV editor and go under map. Go under tools, render UVW template, and we'll make it 2048 by 2048. And all those are good. We don't really care too much about that. Render UV template, save, and then we're just going to put UV on here. And we'll make it a ping. There we go. Close that out. Close that out. And now we need to, our last thing we need to do from here is select the object, file, export, selected. And under where we saved our textures, just because I can have everything in the same place now, we are going to save this as a GW OBJ. And this will be great. Oh, one. And for this, leave it the same way it is. It doesn't matter too much. However, we do need the texture coordinates turned on. The rest, you can change up what you like. I like even polygons for this just because it's easy. Export, and there we go. Press done for that. Close and save this off. Actually, we won't we'll just save it right now. And I'm going to have to save it in the same place that I was saving everything else. Great. It'll work. Next, what we need to do is open Photoshop. They've had this 3D thing in Photoshop since CS3 or 4. However, it hasn't been very good. The only problem you do need is Photoshop Extended. Only Photoshop Extended will work with this because Photoshop Extended has the 3D tools. So if you have Photoshop, just the regular version, sorry, it, it won't work. But if you can get the extended version through any means, I really mean, like, it's easy enough to uh, obtain and you can use it for this uh, sort of tools. So what you want to do after this is you're going to go file open and you're going to find your OBJ file and Autodesk, or Autodesk, Photoshop will recognize this file. So we're going to go under tutorials and texturing and OBJ. And it's going to slowly load and there we go. We have our crate inside Photoshop in 3D. Now, as you can see, there are some weird things going on. That is not a good export. Well, that was weird. And that doesn't have anything on it. I'm just going to quickly move my light over just to check, see if it had. Yeah, that just. Oh, that's just the lighting, I think. Give me a weird, weird look. Yeah, it's just the lighting. Okay, so nothing too, too bad. First, what we're going to do is going to go to orthographic view. So it's easier to view and easier to work with. If you went to perspective view, then you would have to make sure that your textures that you put on top of it would always be in the same sort of view. Um, next, what we're going to do is turn off the shadows. So what you want to do to turn off the shadows is go right click on your object and go catch shadows and cast shadows. And there we go. There's no more shadows on the object, no more weird looking stuff that was happening with it. Uh, also, what you want to do is, in my opinion, Make sure that the object mesh coordinates right here are all zeroed out or 100 for the scale. Next, what we can do is we can actually just start working with this object. So what we'll want to do is under here, create a new layer. And this new layer will allow us to paint stuff on. However, we can only make this object move and stuff in the layer 1. Once we switch to layer 2, it's all our painting and stuff. Also what I want to do is make this an unlit texture because you can't really see much with the shadows over there. So what you want to do is under environment. Uh, excuse me, this is one that I have forgotten to quickly. No, not under diffuse. It's under the environment or somewhere under here. Presets? No, it wouldn't be under there. Ah, now I remember. Under surface, under style solid, we'll just go flat because that'll do the thing, or we can just do unlit texture. And that's way too bright. So, what we want to do is. Nope, it was flat. And we'll, we'll just make sure that the light is usually in the right place. As well, we don't want a shadow from the light. So, now we can actually work with this. Also, we can, ca we can cast shadows from this. Catch shadows from this thing now. Okay. That doesn't really matter actually, yeah, because there's no shadows from the light. Apologies. So now we can start playing around with this. First, what we're going to do is get a texture that we want. So I'm going to have a texture linked to you in the description. It's just a CG texture, and you can download that.
But for me, I'm going to open it up now. So file open. And it will be for me under my downloads. And wood planks, rough, wood rough. And this is the texture we have. So we're going to open it up, copy this. So control A, control C. And what we're going to do is make sure we are in the top view. As you can see, it automatically switches everything around. We're going to switch our light around a bit so we can see it better. Like that. And we are going to copy and paste this into it. As you can see, I made a new layer for it. We'll delete out layer two. And we will just set this up onto here, like so. And we'll copy and paste, put it there. And merge these two layers. As you see, everything works much like merge layers, much like the Photoshop. But however, if you notice, once we've switched to this, it doesn't move around with it. So what we have to do is we right click on this layer 3 copy and go merge visible or we can merge down as well. But for this one, just we click on this. Apologies. Alright, so some apologies I should make. It wasn't merging down like it should have, so what we have to make sure of is under your mesh out here, under your surface, make sure it's solid because flat does not allow it to merge down at all. So we'll make sure it's solid over here on the outside and we can still see everything. Next what we want to do is we want to go to the uh, camera, so under camera, 3D camera, we want to see it from just the top view. So what we're going to do is now paste in that uh, wood, making sure that this is again under the materials, it is a uh, solid, under surface, sorry. So under layer one, under surface, it's solid. What we're going to do is make a new layer, copy and paste this in, and set it up to about the right size. Not too, too big of a deal, but you know, you don't want it to have a way off. And now we'll merge these two together and merge this down. So now what this did is, as you can see, it is right on our 3D object. As well, you can make sure that it's properly set up with your UVs by double clicking your diffuse layer and there all your UVs are set up. So next what we want to do is continue doing this but on every side. So what we're going to do is go under our right side, copy and paste it in, drop it down, and copy, there we go, merge the layers. And what we're going to do is duplicate this layer, okay, turn one off, merge this one down, and as you can see, it's on that side now too. If we switch, if we move the light over here by clicking this infinite light, and then this little pull area on it, you can see that it looks like there's the uh, wood on that side as well. Now as you can see we changed up the grain of the wood but we're not going for a perfect thing right here so I'm not too worried about that. So why I copied this, why I duplicated this material is since if we use these default views, so now we're going to go left I think, we can just turn it on and it's already set up for us. So we'll just keep duplicating this over That'll be three sides, or that's, that'd be four sides, uh, five sides, and six sides. Okay, so we're going to close all these off, merge this one down. Now look at it from the, the right already has it, yep. So we're going to look at it from the bottom, I guess. Show one of these on, merge it down, and then from the back. Turn one on, merge it down, then from the, I guess, front, turn the last one on, and merge it down. So now you see we have the basics of the materials on everywhere. We still have these little areas to fix up, but that's simple enough to do. But as you can see, very simple. We didn't have to unwrap anything, and we can literally paint on it as well. If you want to, you can go through these small areas by pasting this down and actually what we're going to do, delete this out first, is we're going to take our magic wand tool, click on that, as you can see it selects it perfectly, paste it in, yeah there we go. 
what we're going to want to do is, yeah, do this after. So we'll paste in our object, turn it off a bit, and go back to layer one. Select that, turn on layer two, and select the inverse, and delete it. And there we go, that's in there, and we can just merge that down as well. So you can continue to do that for everything. The good thing about this uh, 3D thing is you can see it knows pretty well what you're trying to paste into it. Like there's not too much, uh, the 3D it knows pretty well where you're trying to go with it. There's not too much artifacting or anything like that. So you can just keep going around like this, but I will leave it like this for right now because it's easier to do that for me. You can do the other ones if you really want to. So we're going to move the light around to here, and now we're going to put the wear in it. I am going to undo that maneuver that I did with the uh, camera, because that makes it all look weird. Make sure the coordinates are back to normal. Ah, no, that's right for the camera. Never mind. There we go. So just back to normal like that. Save out the PSD file, and now let's put on the wear. So now we are going to do the wear, as I said. Sorry, I paused the video a bit to set up some stuff. And we are going to use this brush, uh, this dirt brush that I have. I just have it on my desktop right now so I can easily get to it. However, um, usually you want to put it on your presets under your, auto, your Adobe fo folders to set up brushes. But I mean, you probably know how to do that. So what we're going to do now is import these brushes so we can use them for our dirtware. So under brushes, so we go to our paintbrush and I go down here this and then go load brushes and I'm minor since I'm minor in desktop I will use pull them in there like that and now we have some dirt brushes as well I like making sure these are large thumbnails so I can actually see them there we go and these are our brushes that we'll be using so now we're just going to draw a bit of dirt on here this is way too big so we're just going to make it down a bit smaller and there we go some dirt and you can literally just paint dirt on this we don't even need to do on a new layer because if we use do it on this 3D layer, you can automatically see that it's just set up perfectly for it. And there's some bad artifacting there, but that's just because of our dirt. So usually what I try to do is I try to use only the orthographic view, so left, right, up, down, just to make sure that it doesn't have any of that problem that it stretches as you saw the other one. So we're just going to go to our left view, paint some stuff on. As well, you can make sure not to have any of that by um, by just you know making sure that your brushes don't go over the side of anything. So as I can show you, I'm going to just go to an orthographic view like this, make sure my brush is smaller, it's around 150 pixels, and you can see there won't be any problems with that now. We go like that, and then we got everything, yeah, everything good enough for what I want of this purpose of this project. So we have our dirt on the crate, we have the wood on the crate, we have set up the crate's materials, and now what we want to do is put the ambient occlusion on that we baked out a long time ago. So we're going to go to our diffuse texture by right double clicking on this. I'm going to go file open, and we're going to find our ambient occlusion. Copy this, so control A, C, control A, control C, copy all, or select all, copy. And I made it 2048. I forgot about that because this texture is 1024. I will go over how to make the texture bigger just a bit later. So we're going to apply that and we are going to change this to multiply. Now what you can see, is a nice thing, we'll save this. On your Crato 1 it will automatically update the ambient occlusion because that's just the way it is. Um, however, what we want to make sure of is that when we go back to working on this, we want our PSB right here. This is the one we're working with. This is, I don't know why that one's still open. Um, these are weird and open and stuff. PSB, close that out. It's just the way everything opens up due to the 3D working of that. We don't need that open either. So we just have these two things open. But however, you'll see, if I have this layer selected and I start drawing on the dirt, it'll work. However, you need to make sure that whatever layer you want to draw on is selected because now you can see this layer has that dirt that I drew on it. So usually a good thing to do is to leave your ambient occlusion unchecked like this. So if you do start drawing, it's going to come up with a it should come up with a warning. 
but it doesn't because it's silly. Usually it'll come up with a warning that says you can't start drawing on this because it's not a proper layer to draw on. I do not know what actually causes the error except what I've had before is an unmade or an unmade uh, a turned off layer I guess and it works fine with brushes. It might not work fine with merging stuff down. That's probably it. So if we make a new layer and we start drawing stuff onto the layer like this and now we try to merge this down it should have come up with a warning saying we can't do that. So we're going to undo that and try this again. No, it, it likes me too much today. Okay, so I'm going to give up trying to give pop the error, but there's one error that says uh, change texture target, or you don't have the proper check texture target to merge down onto, so would you like to change the target? All you have to do to make sure that is fixed is make a new layer and turn it on like this, and there it is. Um, usually a good way to, a good practice is to have a different layer for your color, so your base colors like your wood texture, your metal texture, like the base textures, and then have another one for your dirt layer and your decal layer, well dirt layer, and then another one for your decal layer. So to make sure you can do this properly, is I'm going to set up another layer in here. Delete, actually, I do not want to delete up the ambient occlusion layer. Make a new layer. And we'll call this dirt. And I'll make it a white dirt just to make sure that we can see it. And as you can see, when I start drawing on this, start drawing on this, it should start to. There we go. When I start drawing on this material. As you can see, there's a lot of it. It's going to be really ugly because, I mean, why not? And we'll make it a red. There's some red in there so you can actually see it on the, uh, what's it called? On the texture. So we got that. And I'm just going to rotate this around so it goes on to it at a weird angle so it doesn't look too, too bad. Well, it'll still look horrible. But, you know. And when we merge this down, you'll notice that even though merged down into that, into the same layer on here, under our diffuse texture, we have that layer right there. Because I saved it onto the, well, I just saved that onto the ambient inclusion layer. But you get my ideas of that. So there we go. That's how you can easily texture an object. Now we have this all done. We'll save this off. Save as desktop. I'm just going to save it as a desktop as a Targa. Actually, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go under my H drive, I guess. And then we're going to go under YouTube, and Tutorials, and Texturing. And we're going to save off this as diffuse. There you go. Close this out because we don't need this anymore. And we'll save that because we already saved it. Uh, yes. Thank okay. you. And now we're just going to go into our material editor by pressing M. Make a new standard material. Standard. And under our diffuse, bitmap, go to texturing, diffuse and drop that onto the crate and show in view part. And there we go. We had a very simple texturing job of the crate. It's not the best because I mean I didn't make it that good. As well there's some little artifacting there but that's just because of the size of the of, of the uh, texture not because of anything else. So I think I'm going to continue showing you how to texture in Photoshop like this because it is a very easy thing to do and easy thing to know or a good thing to know because then you don't have to unwrap UVs or anything. However uh, there's a lot to go through and I'm already 20 minutes in and try and keep tutorials shorter this time not going out three hours or something so this is just an introduction to how to paint in Photoshop on the 3D object itself I will continue on this uh, series, well mini series a bit later tomorrow tomorrow sometime so I'll see you guys later and hope you enjoyed and learned how to paint and texture in, right into Photoshop cheers <laughs>